you are laying on the floor. Your face is pressed against the ground. You can hardly breathe. Because you have a heavy man laying on top of you with all his weight on your chest. With his, mouth, with his right hand, he's covering your mouth and your nose. With his left hand, he's grabbing your throat and choking you. What do you feel right now? Anxiety? Are you panicking? Extreme stress? You're probably freaking out. But what if I told you that you could be calm even under this type of pressure? Even in life's most difficult moments? And human lives are full of difficult moments. In moments like these, we often succumb to thoughts of anger, jealousy, self-doubt, insecurity. We like to refer to these thoughts as the enemy within. The enemy within won't let you be your true self. Won't let you achieve your full potential. To defeat the enemy within. To remain calm. Under pressure. In life's difficult moments. You must develop something very important. You must develop... mental strength. For the last 25 years, I've been teaching students from all over the world, thousands of students from all walks of life. And I found that one of the greatest desires for human beings is to have mental strength. So today I want to share with you how the ancient martial art, the philosophy of a martial art called Jiu-Jitsu can help you attain mental strength. Jiu-Jitsu is the martial art of the Japanese samurai warrior. They developed a fighting system based on the idea that soft can overcome hard. That even if you're small and phys physically weaker, you can defeat a stronger and bigger opponent as long as you know how to use the strength of your opponent to your advantage. So instead of resisting, you yield. Instead of being rigid, you relax. Wait a minute. You're probably thinking, what? Relax in a fight? What could be more counterintuitive than that? Yes, the ability to relax under pressure is the biggest secret of jiu-jitsu. When jiu-jitsu arrived in the Western world in the latter part of the 19th century, it quickly became a huge craze. Everyone wanted to learn from police departments and military units around the world to the president of the United States who brought a jiu-jitsu master from Japan to teach him jiu-jitsu in the White House. He literally removed the furniture from one of the rooms in the White House, laid mats on the floor so that he and his family could learn 
jiu-jitsu. Fast forward 114 years, and jiu-jitsu is once again widely popular around the world. It is mostly practiced today as a grappling sport. Well-trained athletes compete with each other in high-level tournaments that take place in every corner of the planet. But what many people don't know is that the ancient art of jiu-jitsu has a profound philosophy that can affect our lives in so many wonderful ways. And unfortunately, this philosophy has been widely forgotten. Following the footsteps of my teacher, the greatest genius of jiu-jitsu in the modern era, Grandmaster Helio Grace, and our father, who always taught us that nothing is more important in jiu-jitsu than following its philosophy. My brothers and I dedicate our lives to the preservation of this philosophy and applying it to our time. I'm so happy with the opportunity to bring this philosophy to life in such a prestigious stage here in Santo Domingo. And the first thing I can tell you is that this philosophy will not do you any good if you don't practice it, if you don't experience it. The Tao Te Ching, a Chinese classic written over 2,000 years ago, which represents the philosophical foundation of Jiu-Jitsu. In its first page, first phrase says, the Tao that can be told is not the eternal Tao. The name that can be named is not the eternal name. What does this mean? That words alone don't matter. You must train. And how do we teach the art of Jiu-Jitsu? For example, if I'm going to show you how to block a punch, I'm going to start by teaching you the defensive mechanism. Then you're going to have to go through a conscious process of repeating that skill hundreds of times until it becomes automatic, until it becomes a reflex, an instinct, and you no longer have to think. The mind is the same. What do you do if you want your body to be strong? You train your body to be strong. And if you want your mind to be strong, you must train it to be strong by repeating daily practices with little things and big things alike. And if you do it every day, it will become automatic and you won't have to think. The idea is to train your mind so you don't have to use it. So you can trust your instincts. So what I'm going to do here today is give you three daily practices so that you can incorporate the philosophy of jiu-jitsu in your lives. Even if you never step foot in a martial arts school, you will be able to attain mental strength. You will learn to be calm under pressure and in difficult moments. Number one, make a conscious decision to focus. Start by focusing on your breathing. Observe the air flowing in and flowing out. Focus on your senses. See more, hear more, smell more, taste more, touch more, feel more. Focus on the little things. Everything you do, do it with your full attention and I guarantee that you're going to do it better, much better, every task. By being present, not only you're going to be able to avoid any danger that can come your way, but you'll also be able to appreciate life's most precious 
moment. You'll be able to build deeper connections with people who are closest to you. You'll be able to tap into opportunities that you might not even have seen if you had been distracted. And this brings us to our second daily practice. Make a conscious decision to accept. By being present, it will be easier for you to accept your reality. Where you are, to understand what you're feeling. You see, acceptance is about your relationship with what is so. With the facts as they are, right now, in the moment. And through acceptance, you'll be able to separate yourself from the enemy within. You will be able to see the totality of your life and find reasons to be grateful. Gratitude is one of the most powerful healing forces that exist. Start by being grateful for being alive. Be grateful for the abundance of air all around us, enabling us to breathe. Imagine not being able to breathe. And if you stay on this path, you will find many more reasons to be grateful and it will be easier not only for you to accept your reality but your feelings towards reality when I think of acceptance I think of the ocean and I think of the strongest current that you can imagine and I think of the best swimmer in the world trying to swim against the current that swimmer will fail the only thing that swimmer can do is turn around and go with the flow. And within the flow, find the best direction forward. Finding the best direction brings us to our third daily practice. Make a conscious decision to transform. Transform negatives into positives. Transform your perspective. For example, imagine yourself in a beautiful garden. And suddenly, you spot a, a stunning flower. The most beautiful flower you have ever seen in your life. And you decide to capture that moment. You take your camera, you take a picture. You look at the picture, it looks horrible, it looks ugly. And then you realize that the sun is right across from you. What do you do? You move. You change the angle. You don't mess with the flower. You change the angle. And then the flower will look beautiful. So it's not about the events that happen in your life. That's not what matters most. What matters most is your reaction. How you react to these events. Now, let's come back to the enemy within. How do we defeat the enemy within? You might be thinking that as a martial arts teacher, I'm going to tell you to crush him, to beat him up. But that's far from the truth. That would equate with suppressing your emotions and your feelings. And we know that's never good. So what do we do? We transform the enemy into a friend. And now we call him the friend within. Transform negatives into positives. Transform enemies into friends. And I guarantee that you will be happier. The bamboo tree has always been very connected to our philosophy. From the time of the samurais. First, because it's ready. It's always ready. It was born ready. It's the only wood that doesn't have to be planed. It doesn't have to be polished. It's shiny and smooth naturally. And readiness has to do with focus. So it symbolizes focus. When we built 
our headquarter facility in North Miami Beach, we decided to plant bamboo trees right in front of the building. And those bamboo trees were tested very quickly because of Hurricane Irma last year. In the aftermath of the hurricane, it was terrible. Concrete poles on the ground. Trees completely uprooted, but the bamboo trees survived. Why? Not because they're stronger, but because they are flexible. Because they didn't try to resist the wind. They bent with the wind. And then when the wind was over, they came back to its original position. And the bamboo wood is the only wood in the world that is hollow, representing the idea of the empty mind. And how do you achieve an efficient empty mind, one that you can trust through training? I would like to close by sharing a very personal moment. My father was my best friend. My father was my hero. I don't think it's possible for a son to love his father more than I love mine. May 28, 2016 was the most difficult day of my life when I received the news that my father had passed. I was walking into a class. I had students waiting for me on the mat. And I was, as I was walking in, my brother, my brother, gave me the news that he had just received from Brazil. This moment was captured on video because of a camera, a surveillance camera that we have in our school. And I want to share that moment with all of you right now. The most difficult moment in my life. Make no mistake about it. When I hugged my brother, I felt like I was laying on my back. My face was pressed against the floor. I couldn't breathe. My nose and my mouth were covered. That's how I felt. And I felt like I was being choked. I looked at the ground and I remember thinking that I wanted to dig a hole and hide inside. But then I saw the mat. I saw, my, I saw my direction. I saw my way. I saw my flow. And I went with the flow and I walked. As hard as it was, I walked into that mat. I knew that my father would be proud of me for doing that. I knew that I was honoring him by doing that. That represented the continuation of my life. And today, looking at this video, I'm very proud of myself for doing that. I'm very happy that I did it. The work of a master is to go with the flow. Be the master of your mind, and you will be the master of your life. Thank you very much. Thank you.